Hey guys, so today I'm going to get started on the Graugans plank. Some of you guys may remember the Graugans from Colorado FPV videos. If you guys have never checked out Colorado FPV, definitely check them out. Their videos are amazing. Um, from a few, pure joy of flight aspect, this is probably uh, my favorite plane that I've ever designed. With its large size, it's smooth and stable, but being a plank, it's still really agile. So it's not the most functional plane, you know, it's not small, it's not easy to, to transport, even though the wings are removable, you know, you can still see it's a 36 inch wing. So uh, not the most practical plane, but just from a pure flying aspect, a pure joy of flight aspect, uh, this is this is my favorite. So I'll be showing you guys a lot of techniques as I go along and uh, this video will be more in depth than future videos. Once you guys kind of see the techniques of how I build at least my EPP planes, it's pretty similar across all of them. So I'll go a little bit more in depth on this one and I'll bring you guys along for other designs um, as the channel goes along. Yeah, as I progress through this build, uh, definitely let me know if you guys have any questions. If, there, if anything's not clear, if I'm not making something clear, just let me know and I'll definitely try to uh, address anything that comes up. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the build. Um, yeah, let's, let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do on this build is put plywood ribs at the edges of the root core and at the root of the wingtip core. Okay. So that's going to give me a place to attach the Kevlar. It's going to give a very stiff root so you can't bend it. Um, that's important on a removable wing, but not so much on a non-removable wing. Okay, so I have this uh, spare piece of core here, and I'm going to use that to outline on the plywood uh, where I'm going to cut with the Dremel. And uh, I'm going to make four of these. Okay, so let's get started. Okay guys, so now that we have um, four rough cut ribs, I'm going to spray two of these with 3M90. Eventually I'll do all of them, but for now I'm just going to start with two, and then I'll do the other two later. I'm going to spray one side of the root core, and I'm going to spray one side of a, of a wing core. Okay, the, uh, the root side of the wing core. I've left the, uh, the core sitting a little proud of the wing beds, um, so that when I, when I mate the rib to the core, um, it won't stick to the bed, okay? But I'm going to spray these down now, let them set up, tack up a little bit, and then we'll apply the ribs to the cores. Okay, so you can see I've got the cores here. I've got uh, weights sitting on the beds to keep everything perfectly flat. I don't want any, any bending in the airfoil when I attach this plywood rib. So the, the 3M90 is tacked up, and now I'm just going to carefully apply the rib to the core, make sure everything's sitting a little proud. I'm gonna butt these cans up here against the, against the rib to make sure that it's sitting flush. And I'm gonna let that sit until it's firmly tacked on there. Uh, and then I'm gonna do the other two. Uh, actually, hold that thought. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sand these back, or at least the center core, I'm gonna sand that one back so that it'll fit flush in the bed because right now it won't, right now it's a little bit too big. So I need, I'm going to need to sand that back and then I can push the core through to the other side so that it sits a little proud on the other side and add plywood on that side. Okay guys, so that is set up. As you can see, the, the rib sits a little proud of the airfoil. So I'm going to cut that back uh, closer with this uh, sanding attachment on the Dremel. And then when I get it close, I'm going to put it back in the bed and hand sand it until it's perfectly flush with the airfoil surface, okay? Okay guys, now I'm going to use this sanding block to finish sanding this rib flush with the airfoil. Uh, definitely don't do this with a EPS wing or um, just a compressible foam wing as it will absolutely destroy the airfoil. Uh, not as much of a concern with EPP since it doesn't sand that well. You can you can degrade the airfoil, but as long as you're not sanding too hard um, and you're just being careful, you should be left with a with a very good airfoil. Um, I've been doing this for years, um, so yeah. But don't try this with EPS or anything like that.
Okay guys, so the reason for just doing one side at a time was um, so that I can push this airfoil through now so that it sits proud on the other side um, and I can attach the rib to this side without it sticking to the bed here, okay? So now I'm just gonna repeat that process for the other wing and this side of the core and we'll be able to move on to the next step. After you get all the plywood ribs put on, next we're going to bond the lower beds, the lower beds only, together with uh, 3M90. And this is gonna help you when you're placing the spars to make sure the wing, the removable spar to make sure the wing is perfectly straight. Okay guys, so here is the main spar. Um, you can see I've separated the shell into three sections. And then on these, so obviously these pieces go out in the wing and this piece goes in the center body. So I'm going to cover the end of each of the wing tubes with masking tape. And then I'm going to super glue that masking tape onto the carbon. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna keep the Gorilla Glue out when I embed the spar into the wing. I don't want the Gorilla Glue going in this end and gluing the main wing spar onto the carrier tube. And then I'm gonna poke a little tiny holes in there um, because the, the wing spar, the main spar can form a very tight seal with the carrier tube and pressure can build up and it can be difficult to get the wing on unless you have tiny little holes in there. And that's all it takes, just tiny little holes. So once I've CA'd that masking tape on, I'm just gonna take some sandpaper and I'm gonna sand off the excess. All right, and there you go. And I'm gonna do that on the other side and then we'll go ahead and start uh, preparing the wing to accept the spar. So the main spar is gonna be centered three and three eighths of an inch back from the leading edge. Uh, it's gonna be centered top and bottom. So using a Dremel bit, I'm gonna clear out inside the circle, and then I'm gonna do this on all, on uh, the other three ribs and proceed from there. Okay guys, so once you've bored out the hole for the wing rod in all four ribs, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the foam for the spar system, okay? <clears throat> Normally I use white foam. It's a little bit uh, flimsier, uh, a little bit more flexible. This stuff is a little bit more brittle, um, but in this case, uh, I don't think it's gonna matter. So we went with the black foam. Um, since it's black, instead of white, I can't use a regular pen, so I'm using a chalk marker. So hopefully this will give you an idea of what's going on. You can see where I marked um, where I'm going to cut out for the main spar. And then running these white lines out here, this is going to be for the um, vertical spars, okay? So the front one I ran to, uh, to about 2 inches from the tip, and the rear one I'm running to about 9 inches from the tip, okay? Uh, I'm going to cut this out with an X-Acto and a Dremel, and then I'm going to cut these out with an X-Acto, and then we'll get to uh, embedding the spars. So real quick, before you do anything else, make sure everything seats really well. Make sure all of your ribs line up and everything is seating flat before you proceed to uh, putting on the Gorilla Glue and um, bonding everything in. And before we do that, we're going to apply Vaseline in a couple of places to the inside of these ribs right here. So when the Gorilla Glue seeps through, it doesn't uh, bond these ribs together and then actually inside on the main spar in case anything seeps in to the main spar so it doesn't bond to the carbon fiber shell, the wrap tube part of the spar. All right, so I'm gonna apply a little bit of Vaseline around the exit to this rib. In case, uh, some of the Gorilla Glue is gonna seep out in between the ribs, 
So you just want to make sure the ribs aren't bonding together where you don't want them to. Don't get it on the inside of the rib because you want that to bond to the Gorilla Glue. You're also going to apply some to the spar. Right where the carrier tubes join, you're going to want to apply a little bit of Vaseline to the spar in case any Gorilla Glue seeps into that joint. And you want to put it on really thin so that it doesn't um, push up through the joint when you slide the shells back on the carrier tubes. Okay, I'm also going to lay a piece of masking tape down right where the spar is going to be laying over. The Gorilla Glue will seep through the, the foam in some areas and if you don't keep the, the Gorilla Glue from getting into the foam on the bottom, then you will have a hard time getting your wing off of the beds. So this is just going to keep the Gorilla Glue from sticking to the beds as it seeps through the wing. Alright guys, time to get this rag wet and start getting everything moistened and ready for the Gorilla Glue. In my opinion, this is the most tedious part of the build, but now that we got that out of the way, we'll just let it sit for a couple hours, let the Gorilla Glue foam up and harden, and then we'll get on to the fun stuff. Hey, pumpkin. Okay, the Gorilla Glue has set up and everything is good. So we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna place these spars exactly on the underside, um, directly underneath these spars. You don't want to offset it either direction, you want them directly underneath to uh, form a nice I-beam. All right, so we're gonna flip that over and get started. Okay, so an embarrassingly easy way to make this wing slightly more efficient look slightly better and be a little bit more durable so the tip doesn't get crushed is to round off the tip of the wing. This also adds um, actually install resistance. I'm embarrassed to say I just use a appropriate sized um, pot to give me the quarter circle to round it out but actually in a build like this that works just fine. So what the heck is what I'm gonna do. All right, after I've trimmed the tip, um, I'm going to I have a flexible ruler and I'm going to wrap it around the tip and mark a straight line along the cord line of the airfoil. And that's just gonna help me visualize as I clean up the tip a little bit with a razor to make it rounded instead of just squared off like it is now. on the other side and you're good to go. Next up, I rough shaped the Elevon trailing edges, marked out where they're gonna go on the wing. This is about four inches right here at the root and two and three quarters here at the tip. And then I, with the X-Acto, separated the section where the balsa Elevon will go. And then I'm going to attach this with Thin CA and Accelerator. I'm gonna spray Accelerator on that edge and on the balsa leading edge right there. And then I'm gonna position it and let the super glue get into that gap. Um, you could do it probably other ways. You could probably do it with like 3M90. You could probably do it with Gorilla Glue. This is just, it's fast, it's light, and it's gonna be um, captured with the Kevlar so I'm not worried about getting the best bond in the world. Um, so that's probably why all those other solutions would work as well. It's about 15 minutes later. My forearm is about to fall off, but we have rough shaped the balsa trailing edge. Um, getting it down as close as I feel comfortable without cutting through the trailing edge. So we've rough cut that. Um, I actually overcut in a couple places, but I'm actually gonna shave off that part anyways, about an eighth of an inch. 
So we're good there. Now I'm going to mask this off so I don't sand into the foam. And then I'm going to take my sanding block with fresh 80 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to sand this uh, flush with the foam and to a knife edge trailing edge. The things I do for a few percentage points of efficiency. It's all good though. So it is tedious, time consuming, and a mess, but it is totally worth it. Look at that trailing edge. We're going fast, baby. We're going fast. The next thing we're going to do on this build is install the servo. Um, on this build I'm using HS645 MGs. Um, I'm placing the, the front of the servo about an inch and a half back from the rear spar. And I've set it out far enough such that I have about this much overlap of the servo lead coming out of the wing where I have cut a hole um, and I can store the servo lead so it's not hanging out. But I can pull it out and then insert it into the, uh, the female side when I'm uh, hooking up the wing. I do want to leave a little bit of space in here because that's where our wing joiner clip is going to go. And then back here is where our wing aligning pin is going to go. So I'll get started on cutting that out and embedding that servo. Now we have the servo pocket cleared out, test fit to make the shirt, make sure the servo fits. And you want to make sure that the, um, the servo extension is all the way underneath the surface of the foam such that when you put on the filler and then sand the filler back, you don't um, sand through one of these wires. Okay, um, and you can kind of see how I threaded it there so that it comes out in the hole that we have there. But test fit it, make sure everything fits. And then go ahead and apply a layer of goop inside the pocket. Okay, and then on the part of the servo that is contacting the pocket. So I'll do that real quick and then, yeah, just do the other wing. And then we'll be ready to start the Kevlar process, which I covered in another video. Also make sure you center the servo before you embed it in the wing, otherwise it will be very hard to take off the horn, the arm, and uh, reposition it.